What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we'll be doing a, another vacuum save. This is episode 51, the first episode of 2024, and we've got a large batch of machines right here. Let's see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 vacuums this time around. And I gotta say, we've got a pretty good selection, I'd say. In fact, such a big selection that I couldn't even film this against my couch like I usually do. Instead, we're against the Entertainment Center and using the gross wide-angle lens, which for some reason on my Note 10 looks like garbage. I don't know why. But anyways, this is... Yeah, so apologies for the video quality. It's probably terrible. But anyways, if I did the normal one, well, that's kind of zoomed in unnecessarily. So yeah, the wide-angle lens is what we're going to have to stick with. Um, but anyways, so this is a lot of machines, with the most recent being probably the most interesting, my Phantom Wildcat. Now, this video does feature some from test stores, as you can see from the tested videos, some from eBay, in the case of a couple of the Dysons, um, and one from Mercari, well, a couple from Mercari, in fact. But yeah, and all these machines have little stories behind them, so we'll go into all that like we oh so typically do. Starting off with what I think is the most interesting, and definitely the most sought after, the Phantom Wildcat. Now, as you guys know, I'm a pretty big Phantom schnob, and this is the last Phantom ever made, at least by Iona, the actual company that makes Phantom. Made in 2001, this is the final machine that basically killed Phantom. It's... It has a lot of issues with it compared to the older style Phantoms. You can tell it's the build quality is a lot worse. Cleaning performance is a lot worse. But I did get this from another vacuum collector friend who had previously bought it on eBay. So this was more so a save in the sense of saving it from getting it, uh, from it going to somebody who wouldn't take as good care of it. But nevertheless, it's a fascinating machine. I did do a video on this already. In fact, it's my most recent video. So I definitely recommend checking that out. But we will give this a short run, even though we did already do that in the previous video. I did add a dusting brush to it. That's not the original. But besides that, I haven't touched it since I got it. So this machine does need some work done to the brush roll, mainly because there is a noticeable rattle in the chassis. And this machine does sound artificially loud because the exhaust is right up top. So, a little goofy, but yeah, it's a pretty rare machine, part of Phantom's history. Filter is clean. Previous person who had this did some decent work to refurb this before I got it. But, yeah... So it did get a little bit of stuff. Uh, some of that's from the previous video. It has this little dirt arrestor feature, which you can see some dust did end up in that section. So, yeah. I'll do some work to this, and a full review on this will come at some point this year, hopefully. But yeah, so that's the relatively rare Phantom Wildcat. Next, we've got what is probably a first for this series, a vacuum that more than likely won't get saved. I know, it kind of flies in the face of the whole show, right? Well, this is a very sad Hoover Air Steerable. As you can see, it's seen better days. On both ends of this hose, in fact. So this hose is just completely shot by every sense of the word. So frankly, this hose is definitely going to get thrown away. Now, the rest of the machine may end up following suit because if you see how badly this runs it, again I've seen worse for sure it's just you know is it really worth fixing 
Normally, I would always say a vacuum's worth fixing. But I don't believe those hoses are affordable. But we will give it a run. Yeah, so the motor is definitely going out. And it's funny because whenever I whenever I got it, the brush roll motor was stuck in the on position, even when the machine was upright. Now we have the opposite problem where the brush roll motor has just clapped out entirely. So the brush roll motor is completely dead, and then the main suction motor is definitely on its way out. Um it's the bearings sound really rough, really dry, and I'm sure the machine's probably also clogged on top of that. So, not really worth fixing. Um, if I can source, if I can source a brush roll motor and get and service this motor back into decent condition, then maybe I'll buy a hose for it, and then it'd be okay with this new set of filters. But I, I have my doubts. So I'm not against fixing this it's possible that i could fix this but i don't expect to i expect that it will more than likely end up being a bit too far gone but who knows maybe i'm wrong maybe i'll find another one of these i'm in better shape or like with a good handle and a better set of motors and i can just kind of swap between the two who knows uh, it's definitely it definitely has potential it may get fixed. Who knows? It actually might get fixed, but I'm not. I'm not betting on it. So, who knows? Um, if I do end up fixing it, you'll more than likely see it running later on down the road. But as of right now, I have no plans for it, so it's probably just going to rot in the rot away in the basement until further notice. That hose, however, is definitely going in the trash. All right. So next, we've got a couple sad stories. Well, they're the same sad story, but they're too sad who well one's less sad than the other so we'll start off with the less sad hoover it's a hoover breathe easy and it's actually in great shape so what's so sad about it well what's sad is it came from my local habitat for humanity which is closing down uh, my local habitat for humanity despite it being there for a while and despite you know they have a pretty big you know impact on the community i mean the house i used to live in the one where vacuum saved Bissell edition yet again and deluxe edition you know the two most popular videos on this channel were recorded there that house was built by them and my local habitat for humanity is closing because they just their landlord is raising the rent they can't afford it they can't find a new building in the meantime and the landlord wants to do something else actually no I, I stand corrected it wasn't because it was going up because the landlord has decided to kick them out because the landlord wants something else with to do with the space presumably a place that gets more profit i presume um but yeah so that's unfortunate and as a result the it's going to be pretty much the end of the road as far as finding machines from habitat for humanity now, there is a Goodwill right next door to that habitat, which I suspect is probably going to get all the vacuums from here on out. But the question is, are they actually going to take them in, or are they just going to throw them away? Um, I'm not sure. And it really sucks, because Goodwill's a terrible company, and I really hate supporting them. I already don't like buying from them as it is, so I won't buy something unless I really need it or want it. But, yeah. So, Restore is closing, unfortunately. So this will likely be the last, one of the last videos that features vacuums from there. And, you know, that would include this Hoover Breathe Easy and this Hoover Wind Tunnel. So yeah, very unfortunate. And uh, I don't believe any of these other machines are from there. Yeah, so... We'll go ahead and run both of these Hoovers, starting off with this quite nice Breathe Easy. I mean, yes, it was 25 bucks, which is a little much for an Elite at a thrift store, but it's complete. And did I need this? Absolutely not. I didn't need this at all. But it looked cool, and it was an Elite I didn't have. This obviously needs wash. That's disgusting. Um, 
probably going to blow dust everywhere. Definitely going to get some HEPA bags for this at some point, since I have a lot of elites. And let's check out that brush roll. Not bad at all. And the belt still has good tension. So, yeah. Belt still has good tension. Doesn't even need a belt. There's no rust on this motor spindle. I'll probably oil these wheels a little bit. They run a little rough. Probably throw some tri-flow on here and pull whatever this is off. Well, the brush roll's in great condition. It's a single row brush roll with totally not at all matching green bristles for some reason. And yeah, so this thing's in beautiful shape. I just hope it runs as good as it looks considering the price. And I've had this for a long time. And frankly, even if this thing was a brick and was junk, I obviously wouldn't try to return it because again, I want to support this place as much as I can during their final days. But yeah, so we'll plug this in and hope that this runs smoothly. It is an Elite, so it's probably going to be loud no matter what, but hopefully it's at least tolerable. Strangely enough, even though this feels like a more premium Elite, since it's a hard bag cover and a stretch hose and all that, you can tell this is one of the newer Elites that is, you know, the junky ones, because this cord is like two feet long. Not a big deal, obviously. I mean, the way Elites are designed, you can easily swap in a cord from a more premium Elite. But it is, even those weren't very long. So, yeah, quite annoying. But, yeah, I guess before we'll run it, we'll look at the serial date sticker. Because I guess I forgot to do that earlier when we looked at the brush roll. U512-900. Cleaner. 12 amps. Oh, it's just 12 amps, so that's interesting. And where's the date code on this? I'm really dumb because I am not seeing the date code. Hmm. Model, there's a barcode. 03030, does that mean anything? Oh, serial number. So is this the 30th, is this January 30th, 2003? Is that right? If so, if, well, I'm just going to assume that's correct, because I always forget how to read these. I'm just going to assume that's correct, but it's probably not. That'd be January 30th, 2003, so that's exactly 21 years old. Not bad, not bad at all. Oh yeah, because 03030, oh yeah, so no matter which way you rate, you're, no matter which direction that goes, that's still January 30th. Or I guess it could be January 3rd if it's the other way. I'm supposed to read that. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So, either way, let's see how loud this is. I really hope it's not loud. I don't have my hearing protection in, but I probably should put in some hearing protection. But anyways... <laughs> Yep, that's an Elite. <sighs> it sounds like an Elite. It smells like an Elite. <sighs> well, apparently they left it in hard floor mode. No wonder it was so hard to push. <sighs> Idiots. Don't even know why it says hard floor. These things are not at all hard floor. Hi, Rocco. 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 No, sir. Rocco. I, I, I got a cat. 
Hello. 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 Pop. What you doing? Other than interrupting my video. Flop. Hey Rocco. Rocco. Flop. Look at all that fuzz. Look at all that fuzz. Look at all that fuzz. Remember six months ago when he was like this big? Like six months ago in the Dirt Devil Cone video. He was he was literally this big. He was as big as his head is now. This was all of him. And now this is just his face. More. 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 It's like made of jello. Orange jello. Flop. Cat. Cat. Ear. This is a cat. Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh. Hi. Hello? Ow! Sir, your claws are... Ow! I know you didn't mean to, sir, but... Uh, uh, sir, your claws are in my nipples, sir! No, no, don't make biscuits on me. Your claws are sharp. There's a fluffy blanket you can make biscuits on. Ow, sir. Sir, no, 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 no. Biscuit, make the biscuits right there. No, 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 no. All right, so next from the same store, we have a Hoover wind tunnel. This part just fell off, but it says needs built, and it was 15 bucks. Now, I think I paid a little bit too much for that, frankly. And, yeah. So, this thing is in pretty rough shape. I, as you saw earlier, the wands were stuffed inside the back chamber. And I was kind of wondering as to why. And then I just now realized that the wand holsters are completely broken off. Which is not ideal. And, as we'd expect, given the tag, the belt is broke. Looking at the bottom, this brush roll is also very worn. Definitely seen better days. But still spins decently freely. You know, I can't spin it by hand, so that's good. 
all this is in really rough shape. Screws don't look the best, but hopefully they're not stripped out. That's the goal at least. Some rusting right there. This thing's honestly, probably should have just left it. But that transparent red though, like I couldn't have, couldn't have just left it, but this may end up getting parted out. So this one is a, is this 2001? That doesn't seem right. This is 01040, that doesn't seem right. So yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. But yeah, U5423 is that model number. And let's see how bad this piece of crap runs. I love these elites, but... Oh, I just forgot to mention, this thing has a genuine bag in it, but it's not a genuine Hoover bag. Don't you love that squeak? It's a genuine Bissell Style 7. Which, I have used in these before, so that's not... In fact, that's usually my go-to, is the Style 7 HEPA bags. Although that's just a... Bissell... Oh, we see what happened here. So this person got this side dirty, and instead of replacing it, they just flipped it over. That That's totally going to work. So that, that needs replaced. Because that's just too far gone. Probably going to spit some dust, but we'll see. That sounds bad. Definitely heard worse though. Well, the filter the filter bag light is on, which tells me that hopefully it's just sounding goofy because the bag's full. Which did look pretty packed, so. Hopefully this is one I'll be able to do something with. It might actually be good enough that I might, even if I don't end up keeping it, I probably could slap a belt on it and sell it locally for a few bucks. But we'll see. I do love this transparent red, though. That's, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll do something with it. Maybe not. So I already have the re completely rebuilt one that I got from Nate a while ago. And then I've got... A few of the transparent blue ones, which I'm trying to build into a good one. And then I've got the Tempo that I'm definitely going to sell at some point. So, I've got plenty of wind tunnels for now. And I need to do something with them and build some sort of good wind tunnel out of them, at least. But this one has potential, for sure. But, as is, definitely needs some TLC. So, maybe I'll do that and do something with this down the road. But more than likely, I'm not. I'm thinking about not keeping it since the it definitely won't be able to hold the wands anymore. But yeah, so that's that. So this green piece of crap is the Eureka Uno. Now I got this at Goodwill. In fact, there's three machines in a row that you're going to see that are from Goodwill. Although this one's in a separate batch from the other two. This one was $14.99. And it has a random sticker with a lot number on it. Almost like this thing's been tr traded hands a few times. It's The Uno, if you're not familiar, is basically the same as the Eureka Ultima, which I already have and is on the list to be rebuilt one of these days. But it has the handle from the Optima, so it's just worse. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it, it's just worse. Because this handle... Like, the idea is, oh, it's an O, so you can grab it. And it's like, yeah, but it's not comfortable. It's, ju it's just a plastic O. There's nothing special about it. But anyways, so for some reason, this one, the cable was bundled up funny, even though both the hooks are in perfect condition. Like, this thing's not in terrible condition. Like, it's even relatively clean, all things considered. Like, yeah, it, it is dirty, of course, if you look closely. But, yeah. Eureka, Bloomington, Illinois, yes. Can't go wrong with that. Serial number UU33062. I forgot what that means as far as date-wise. But, yeah, for some reason I'm forgetting all the date codes. This one's 
This one's from pretty far in the future. But yeah, it's got a hose. Um, it's got... Yeah, so it's... It, I assume the hose sits here, but then there's another hook right here. I'm um, not sure what that's... Oh, I just... Oh, I, I just remembered. I literally saw this for months and didn't know what this was. And I just remembered. That's where the turbo brush goes. And then, of course, that's where the extension wand and crevice tool would go. Crevice tool nestling inside the extension wand. And then the dusting brush would go right there. Yeah. So somehow I forgot that that's where the turbo brush goes. Because, of course, when I got it, the hose was in there. Which is not correct. The hose goes right there. So, and the, hose, the cord clip is still in good shape. That's always a good sign. And this has the same, like, garbage dirt cup set up. It's like a clean view where you slide it and you've got a cup. Only, unlike the clean view, there's no real way to grab it. You just got to kind of yank the sides of it. <laughs> this, this comes out somehow. Somehow you're supposed to be able to remove this. Apparently. And this... Doesn't this break off? Yeah. So there's that filter. Which is gross. Warning, do not use that filter in foam. Yeah, and I believe my Ultima also needs one of these, so I, I probably should buy a pack of these goofy filters. Which, uh, yeah. So that hinges on like that and clicks. I said and clicks into place. I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Did I just put it on upside down? I did. Explains a lot. But that, the fact that you can do that is kind of crazy. Okay. Because I, I imagine I'm not the first person to ever do that. Okay, so we got that. And this is supposed to come out somehow. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling. Oh, okay. There we go. So there's a cup. That was very anticlimactic. That's it. And you just twist it. And just like the clean views, it push it, it swivels it up. And there's f another filter. Oh, well, there's supposed to be a filter. Oh, there it is. Right there. I think I have one of these, actually. That actually doesn't look too bad. There is some debris. I'll fill out of there. Yeah, there's some, some debris in there. But it's the exhaust, at least, so it's not going to get stuck in the motor. I can get that out. Okay, now we can put this back in. Again, it could be worse for sure. Definitely seen worse days. There we go. Alright. And we'll check out. And this one had a good good housekeeping seal. Oh wow, the brush roll's in great shape actually. I saw that this was kind of like messed up. And kind of had little hopes, but it actually appears to be okay. Brush hole's in good shape. Belt has some tension. May need to be changed, but honestly, it's holding on it pretty okay. Hmm, okay. Let's see how to climb this. Of course, it's really hard to push just because... It's terrible. It's like off the weights off center. But let's let's turn this on and see. Maybe it's clogged or something. Who knows? Oh yeah, definitely needs a belt.
okay. This is one of those machines that I had very low hopes for for some reason. But it runs great. Definitely needs a belt. That brush hole started bogging down. And the whole chassis does kind of rattle a bit. So, But it doesn't sound like it's coming from the motor. It sounds like it's the brush roll. Or I should say it feels like it's the brush roll. Because I see, I feel rattle, but I don't see any rattle. So uh, brush roll might be might have some sort of play or something. But definitely could be worse so just needs a very very minor tune-up like nothing super major like this thing's not broken even its current condition it is functional besides just belt so yeah need to find some attachments for it but other than that pretty decent still not sure if it's the type of machine i want to keep in the collection but it's definitely not terrible i mean Oh, maybe it still is terrible, but in terms of what I got, it's not terrible. So you will more than likely see a video on this again at some point in the future. And who knows, maybe maybe this is the type of machine where I'll sell it if somebody wants it. But otherwise, I might just hold on to it or maybe just, you know, like hold on to it in case someone I know needs a vacuum. Since it's, you know, semi, since it's a semi-modern enough machine. But yeah. So, it's got the weird little edge cleaner thing, so I have a feeling this brush roll might be hard to find. But we'll see. Anyways, so Eureka Uno, apparently, is decent. So, on to the next Goodwill machine. Alright, next we have what is arguably the best deal that I got out of Goodwill. This one was $12.99, haphazardly scribbled onto the tag, and... Yeah, and it's a Recar Super Light. Pretty interesting. It appears to be a commercial version since it had a three prong rounded cord and it's in a nice little red color. Made in the USA. And this one does, if we zip open the bag, we have a genuine, well, not a genuine, but we have a HEPA bag in here. So that's interesting. So. Whoever had this ran it with HEPA bags. Appear to be generics though. Oh. I don't know why I said it. And I just realized I, I was like, I remember, I thought I remembered it saying commercial. Yeah, it says it right there. And then if we flip this over, we can see. There's some stuff on the wheels, on the rubber coat wheels. Car commercial vacuum cleaner made in the USA with globally sourced components. But this brush roll, and if you notice, completely locked up. Just entirely. Just not will not budge at all. Completely seized. Nothing. Nothing out of it. So it's a bit interesting. So it's usually pretty rare that I actually fix a machine during this filming process, but I pulled off the bottom plate on this because it's toolless, and I saw the belt on this was perfect, and I was like, well, I don't want to run this knowing it has a bad brush roll and ruining a perfectly good belt that I could still use. So I pulled out the brush roll, and this side, the one the side where the belt is, is perfect. But this side, which ironically is closer to the suction inlet, had a bunch of stuff like just seized to it and you can kind of tell this side's nice and clean this side's all burnt up and this bearing is seized it has a little bit of movement to it but it's very subtle this thing is just this bearing is just kind of shot good news is is the brush roll itself i think is still okay even though there was some burning here and there is there was some crusty stuff kind of on it which you can kind of see right there. I think I saved it just in time. And ironically, now I'm actually getting this bearing to spin a little bit. Obviously, it will do to be changed, but this might actually rotate enough until we get until we get a new bearing. Although the fact that it's spinning now means maybe I could repack this one. Normally, I opt to just replace bearings instead of repacking them, especially when they have wear like this, but this might be savable, at least in the meantime. Hmm. 
Well, I'll put this brushful back together and I'll judge whether or not I want to throw that belt on this and try it. Hey, so while this side is still a lot rougher than this one, we made some progress. Okay, I like what I'm seeing. And this was all just in just pulling this apart and pulling crap out of the end and just spinning it manually a few times. Of course, long term, I'm going to want to replace that bearing and possibly that end cap, but in the meantime, hopefully it'll be okay. Let's pop this on and try it. All right. Let's see if I fixed it. I don't even know if this actually runs yet, so that might have just been a waste of time anyways. But let's find out. <laughs> No, it sounds rough, but it's still spinning freely. Okay. Of course, it's a car, so it's a bit loud. Uh, that comes with the territory. Oh, I hate that, but as much as I hate this machine, it, well, the way it sounds at least, and how loud it is, it is doing the trick now. So, yeah. I was planning on keeping this and selling off my white one, which the white one is for sale. But I might actually sell both of them. But we'll see how that goes. But yeah, this one's definitely pretty interesting. I did get it working. Of course, long term, I am eventually going to try to replace that bearing but once I replace that bearing it should be good I don't know if I don't know if the fan sounds off I don't have much experience with these besides the white one I have I don't know if the fans off balance or if that rattling that I was feeling is just the brush roll but yeah still pretty decent for sure and for 13 bucks I'm definitely not complaining so hell if I buy a if I buy like a five dollar bearing which that's being generous and you know, sell it for forty bucks, and there you go. I made made double my money at least, a little over. So that's good. So yeah, Recar Super Light Commercial, pretty interesting. And I should say that this is again one of those machines where if someone wants it, I will happily sell it. Now this Easy Home vacuum was acquired at the exact same time as the aforementioned Super Light. Although this one was more at 15 but I still decided to get it because I'd never seen one before. I figured it'd be an interesting video, and I like the look of it, and it is complete. So, what I think happened with this is I think someone bought this from, I think, Aldi, if I remember correctly. I think Aldi's the Easy Home brand. They realized that this thing needed a belt, which it, which it definitely does. And they realized you can't officially get belts for these and threw it away. Well, essentially donated it. But I believe a Bissell style 7 belt should do the trick. So I'll likely end up resorting to that. As it's not in terrible shape. And it is complete, has all the attachments. And if we pop this off. You can see it's disgusting, needs a wash, but it's got a decent dual cyclonic setup with a pretty basic filter up in here. Very Eureka-esque, but we can see it was it was bleeding some dirt into the motor. And there's not much we can do about that on this unit, as this is a machine that does not have a user-accessible post-motor filter. Filtration is probably not a strong suit, and based on that brush roll, I'm going to best guess performance isn't either. But I was curious, so let's see how it runs.
kind of is the br sound of the brush roll reminds me of a dirt devil dynamite or just a dirt devil in general and in fact the brush roll like even the shape of it reminds me of a dirt devil it even smells like a dirt devil huh but it looks more like a eureka and it sounds like a bissel okay well whatever this uh weird hodgepodge of crap is partially working definitely still needs a belt and I have a feeling that this deep cleaning monitor moniker is probably ironic but it's complete has all the attachments and I figured it may be a fun video to point and laugh at once I get this thing fully refurbished again this is definitely the type of machine where I probably wouldn't recommend it to anybody but I'd still sell it if someone was desperate for a vacuum but yeah it does have a little crevice tool which again looks very Eureka-esque an extension wand and a dusting brush which again that looks very Eureka-esque so I have a feeling despite the better cyclone setup than anything Eureka currently sells I have a feeling this is probably made by, made by Medea oh and apparently the cords yanked out of the system I'll just stuff that in there like nothing ever happened. Uh, apparently it had a three year warranty. Yeah, I can't make heads or tails of any of that. But, hey. There's that. Goodwills of all locations seem to really enjoy this $12.99 price point as it got me this Dirt Devil Broom Vac. So, I have a feeling there's no belt in there. Definitely don't see a belt. And. You can see E94B, so 1994, model DB720, plant D, made in the USA in Cleveland, Ohio. Alright, let's see if this broom vac runs. Yes, it does. It's very loud in traditional dirt devil fashion but it does run very jiggly as well so that's good and we got the nice telescoping metal red handle so yeah we got a dirt devil broom vac just needs a belt and to be sold because I'm probably not going to keep it but yeah dirt devil broom vac not the new one and not the old cordless one that looks like a broom, but the original. That's what the inside of this little machine looks like, which is another of a car. A little pre-motor filter and a tiny little bottom fill bag for some reason. However, this clips on, yeah. We've got a car OmniClean. Got this from Catholic Charities for $6.00. Even came with some bags. Genuine or car, of course. Hopefully they still make bags for this. And we've got a little exhaust filter as well. Both these filters probably need to be changed. But yeah, pretty decent for a little quick vac. It even has a cord rewind. Quite fascinating. I haven't seen a bagged stick vac in a while. Most of the ones you see are bagless. In fact, to my knowledge, there's not any available now that aren't bagless. Ones from Bissell and Eureka and Dirt Devil are all bagless. This cord's very dusty. I'm also curious as to how long this cord is and how well this rewind works. Looks like that's it. And I assume this button does something. 
Well, I'm not sure. There's probably some button somewhere. Oh, there's a button right here. Ah, uh, I see. So it appears that button activates the rewind. We use our foot to push this down. It has a swivel neck. And we've got a three position height adjustment switch. We have one setting, a no setting, or an off setting, and a two setting. So it looks like this is more than likely a stick back with a brush roll. Uh, and it's not, okay. Not sure why there's two speeds then. I guess just different suction levels in case you want that for some reason. But yeah. Alright, so pretty decent length and cord for a stick back. Still not great, but you know, could be worse. We'll plug it in. Apparently the cord wasn't long enough. We ended up doing a bit of a drop test. Alright, well. Now they've got that out of the way, let's give us a run. Pretty fascinating little machine for sure. And then when you're done, you can push this button. At least I assume you can push this button. And then the handle flops down for storage. Not bad. Of course, the cord's a little short and no tools, which I would, for a lot of other premium features this machine has, I'd kind of expect the ability to use tools, but. Still interesting nonetheless. Probably one of the nicest corded stickbacks I've used. So, pretty good. Now it's eBay time. We've got a Dyson from eBay. Technically, we have one of three Dysons from eBay. But, this one is the HSN exclusive Dyson DC-07. All floors. Or multi-floor. It actually could be that new. This one's 2008, so it's a very, very late DC-07. One of the last DC-07s they made. I believe they discontinued the DC-07 as far as brand new units in, I want to say, 2008, 2009. So this is definitely one of the last DC-07s. Of course, they did some refurbishment runs later on, but as far as new ones... This is pretty much it. Even got the new color scheme of the DC-17 and later. So that's pretty interesting. So yeah, definitely one of the reasons I wanted it is because it's one of the newer 07s with the tougher plastic that does not get brittle and doesn't have issues with fading and all that stuff. And if you do somehow find replacement cleaner heads and all that, they're going to be this darker color. So this is kind of ready for that, so to speak, if I somehow broke this trying to replace a clutch. Clutch on this isn't in the best shape, but the seller didn't advertise it as having a good clutch. They advertise it as having strong suction, though, which it does. So, and they did do an excellent job at refurbishing this otherwise besides the clutch, although there are still a couple things that I'm going to take care of, but they're not necessarily things that I would expect. For example... I'm going to replace those wheels on the sole plate, but I only used this once, and that was in the video where I got it, and we can see, of course there's going to be a little bit of hair on the brush from me using it, but this whole thing is very clean, of course this part always scratches, that's typical, and as does the wheels, but while I am going to do some work to this in regards to replacing this lower hose, so the springiness comes back and potentially rebuilding this clutch. This thing actually is, yeah, from the 16th week of 2008. And, yeah, so it's much newer DC-07. I'm going to try to find a way to 
buff the scratch. If anyone knows a way to buff scratches out of Dyson plastic, like on the wheels and such, and on the bottom, that'd be kind of nice. So I would like to restore this into new condition, if possible. First vacuum cleaner that doesn't lose suction. And of course, we've got a filter, which looks to be close to brand new. And you can still get genuine Dyson filters, interestingly enough, for the 07. Yeah, you gotta make sure to snap that in there right. These always get pushed in correctly. It looks like you replaced the filter too, because that's worn out. Now, I only got this with the upholstery tool, but I did find an eBay listing for a dusting brush. So I did order that, as this does take a darker set of attachments. Still don't have a crevice tool yet, so we just got a basic silver one on there. I'm also looking for a DC-14 in this in this uh, style. There was one in the U.S. called the DC-14 Plus that has a blue cyclone, but otherwise it's the same color as this. So I'm after one of those as well. But yeah, I do like the look of this white one. Quite nice, and the white has no fading or anything on it either. Unfortunately, the packaging was pretty bad, so this got really scuffed, but it should be okay. I'm not super worried about it. I know I mentioned wanting to restore this to close to new condition, but I understand if it's not possible. I'm not worried about it. But yeah, so with that said, these I forgot. I always forget how loud these DC07s are, but we're going to give this a run. <laughs> Cyclones are always obnoxiously loud on these DC-07s. But yeah, brush, of course, even on a perfect clutch on these is super wimpy. Um, but this one does need some sort of TLC with that clutch. Probably, I, the clutch itself is doing its job for the most part, so I might be able to just rebuild it with maybe a new belt. Or, worst case scenario, both belts. Because it's just the one that goes from the motor to the clutch. That one's easy. But the one from the clutch to the brush roll is definitely a little bit more complicated. And I have yet to do it. I've always just replaced the clutch at, at um, as an entire assembly. So, but yeah. So there is that. Cat. But yeah, so that's the HSN exclusive DC07. And the cat. I was going to show this little Dirt Devil stick back, but I already tried it. It doesn't work. This was a Goodwill find for $7. But motor in it doesn't work, so it's junk. Not ideal. But what's not junk, although slightly less junk, is this new Bissell. Why am I featuring a new Bissell and vacuum saved? I don't know, it's just another vacuum I got. But yeah, that's pretty much it. 
It's just a new Vissel. Nothing too special about it. One thing that is pretty interesting is that despite this being a brand new machine, the motor has a burning smell and sounds like it's um, burning out. So that's fun. Like the like the pit, it's like really metallic and like low pitch sounding. Like the motor's like struggling to spin or something, and the motor's making a burning smell. So that's not ideal. But yeah, it's kind of strange for a brand new machine, but. Nevertheless, I guess in a way it was saved from somebody else who would have burnt it out, I guess, even though it will probably still burn out at some point. But I'll probably use it until then and then just, you know, try to get one replaced under warranty since I did just buy it, so it's definitely under warranty. So, I don't know, maybe I'll return it. Who's, who knows? But yeah, in the meantime, Abyssal was saved, I guess, from the horrors of the Amazon warehouse. So, yeah. Next, we've got two machines that are pretty interesting. I actually got these from another vacuum collector. The initial plan was to get both this Shark Infinity and this DC-07 Animal and trade these two machines for my reconditioned original Shark Apex. Problem is, is that the seller lied about the condition of these two machines. Um, even though I made it clear at the time that I was only interested in these two machines if they had zero broken parts, zero fading, and were in good condition with nothing that affects the functionality or usability of the machines, he lied. So I specifically asked, I even on this, I specifically asked, does the handle wiggle? Because the only reason I'm, I want this is because my red one, the handle wiggles. He said no. That was a lie. This handle wiggles worse than my red one. The only thing he mentioned was the cord clip being a little cracked, which that I could forgive because I assumed it had a good handle. In fact, I even asked. It was an assumption. I was specifically told it didn't, and it does. So, um, you might be asking, why do I still have it? Well, I planned on sending these machines back in place of the Apex I was supposed to give him, because frankly, these are not what I was expecting. And as far as the Dyson goes, if you're wondering, it is faded, which I specifically mentioned. I didn't want one that was faded. It's not bad, to be fair, and if that was the only issue, I wouldn't complain. But the biggest issue is that's broken right there. That was not mentioned. And also, I'll show this whenever I open this, but this button's also broke. But this is the main thing I'm concerned about is this. Because this is easy to replace. This is not. And I specifically asked to make sure that there weren't any broken parts. He lied and said there was no broken parts. And they were not in the box. They were not broken during shipping. So, yeah. I planned on sending these back and not even bothering to feature them in a video. But then he told me to insert them into a various... Um, insert them into a certain place implying that he was done with them and he then cancelled the order that I would have used in order to send these back and then yeah so I had no intentions on keeping these obviously given the fact that I didn't really want them and you know didn't want to necessarily take these and then not give anything in return I'm not really that type of person but he then proceeded to tell me to keep them and that he was done with me so I guess these are mine now for the time being and yeah so I wouldn't recommend buying from this individual seller I'll leave the name out of it people who know this person know not to deal with him but yeah so that's pretty much all there is to that and well, I don't necessarily want these machines in their current condition um, since they're no longer desired to be returned to sender they will be for sale because I don't need them. Um, again, I'm not going to bother really doing work to any of these. Um, the Dyson, since since it is working, 
I am going to try to find a bin emptying clip. And I and once I find that, I know I can find a wand release button. And this thing will be mostly fine after a set of filters and a new belt in the clutch. But if someone wants to buy this as is, it is for sale already. Um, for significantly cheaper than what a rebuilt one would be. And then this one, I'm, I might do some work to at some point, but we'll see how it goes. Again, I can't fix the handle, which is the main thing I was concerned about. So, but it does at least partially work in the meantime. Although it is very difficult to use because of the handle. But nevertheless, we'll still give it a run. If I can remember where the power switch is on this. Uh, it's over here, on the side. This sounds pretty rough and it does need a belt and possibly a brush roll so yeah not in the best shape by any stretch of the imagination but it is running at least so that's good I always wanted infinity in good condition and I'm kind of disappointed that I wasted time with this one because in the time that I wasted time with this I skipped out on one that was actually in perfect condition and then while I was dealing with this, that one had sold uh, because I know the guy who was selling it. So that's really frustrating because the time I wasted with this actually cost me a good infinity. And who knows when I'm going to find one of those in good shape. But at least I have two crappy ones. So there's that. All right. And here we have the aforementioned DC-07, which I'll show you that. Well, that part's also broke, although that I've definitely dealt with in the past. But that's also cracked. It's, very, it's ever so slightly, but there's a little chip that's taken out of it. So, this one is for sale, since I don't really want it. It runs perfectly okay. Again, I, I need to flip over the lower hose, and I think I need to replace the belt that goes from the clutch to the motor shaft. And put a new set of filters in it because the filters in here are kind of junk, but it's it is for sale, so yeah.
<laughs> These DC-07s are not exactly known for their cleaning performance. <laughs> Alright, well, yeah. Definitely don't buy this if you're looking for cleaning performance. Um, unless you're buying it from me, then it, yeah, it cleans great. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, but yeah, so DC-07 Animal. For some reason, it sounds quieter than the white one. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I, I always thought the newer ones are supposed to be quieter because the Cyclones were cut off shorter. I don't know. Um, yeah, strange. I don't know. Maybe I will keep this. Who knows? Because, I mean, yeah, I mean, if technically, if I did find that bin clip, then I could replace this button and then just deal with the crack up there and um, put a new belt in the clutch, put some filters in it. And it would be good. Do I really need a DC-07 animal? Not really, but it is, you know, I don't know, it's kind of growing on me a little bit. I, don't, I really don't need it, though. Who knows? But anyways, as of now, it's for sale at least. Maybe something will change. Who knows? But yeah, so that's that's that. I might end up selling a low reach as well, DC07 inside two of those, but we'll see. And now we got oh, there's a ruby, and we got two more Dysons as well. All right, so now we've got a real Dyson. <laughs> well, and that one that actually cleans. Now this I got from eBay, from Dyson's Refurbished Store. It's the Dyson Ball Animal 2 Total Clean. But there's a bit of a problem. I mean, the first one's pretty obvious. Some of the parts that are supposed to be blue are purple. Not sure why that is. This is supposed to be blue. 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 This is supposed to be... That's supposed to be silver. That's supposed to be silver. So, yeah, it's like a weird hop. Oh, jeez, I didn't mean to turn it on. It's like a weird hodgepodge of parts. But that's not the problem. Obviously, that's just cosmetic, and that wouldn't be a big issue. But there's a couple real issues with it. First, the wand doesn't like to go back in. Now that I've messed with it a little bit, it's, well, it's actually starting to kind of behave now. But especially when I first got it, it would really struggle to go back in. And I have to wiggle the machine. Yeah, see, if I just try to push it back in, it gets stuck. And I have to slam it in to get it to close. And, and there's two other issues. First, this gasket is all messed up. You can see it's deformed. Again, that appears to be fixing itself a little bit to its credit. But also, this bottom bin gasket is actually missing entirely. So there's a gasket down there that is just completely missing. It doesn't exist. And as a result, when I ran this, now the cyclones and the filter are now just full of gunk because there is now nothing separating the cyclone discharge chamber from the actual dirt. So... See, if I slam this down, we can see all that stuff from the discharge chamber just ending up in the bin. So, not ideal. And this more than likely will go back. Because I really didn't want to, I really don't want to send this back. I'd really rather just get it exchanged for a good one. One that's actually blue and all that stuff. So I'll likely try to contact Dyson today. And if I can't get a hold of them... Then I'll, I'll return it, because today's the last day I can return it through eBay. I even contacted the the Dyson eBay store where I bought this from, and I asked, like, where I could, like, go to get these issues resolved. Like, can I contact Dyson and get it sent in, or, like, or can I just get it exchanged, you know? And she said, oh, just return it. And I'm like, okay. I really didn't want to, but, because, you know, it's... I really wanted a blue Dyson... You know, and it was a great deal, too. So it was like 200 bucks for a refurbished ball animal, too, with a six-month warranty. 
and it's the blue one. It's the Animal 2 Total Clean, or at least it partially is. It has the right cyclone and the right wand and but and the right ball shells, but cleaner head's not right. Fin's not right, both because of the gasket and this is supposed to be blue, not red. And then also a lot of the internal hoses and pieces are red when they're supposed to be gray or blue. So I suppose it's not a big deal, but it's like if you're if it's Dyson themselves refurbishing it and they still sell this machine, you'd think they'd be able to get their own parts so it doesn't look tacky. And more importantly, you would think they'd make sure that things were manufactured properly with their proper gaskets and that they're not clapped out like this. Because this sticks out and it bleeds air out of this gasket. So, yeah, not ideal. But despite this, it actually, the filter is a decent line of defense. So the fact that it's all sucking through the filter is good because, yes, the filter's getting soiled prematurely. But at least it's stopping it before it gets into the motor. So the motor is still perfectly fine, as is the HEPA filter. It's just all this that's now caked in dirt artificially quickly, even more so than it already happens on a Dyson. So a little disappointed with that. I really wanted to, to keep this and hold on to it. But I'll try to call Dyson one more time. And if I get put on hold for another hour and hung up on, then I'm just going to return it. Dyson's customer service used to be great, but something happened and they all went downhill. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just like leftover holiday rush or what, but some, I'm pretty sure they did something because it's a night and day difference now. But anyways, we'll give this a run. Stepping on the court. But yeah. Good choice to clean up after all the other ones, at least, because these things are beasts when it comes to cleaning performance. I know everyone likes to pretend that these are not because they want to hate Dyson, but trust me, there's plenty of other reasons to hate Dyson without lying about their cleaning performance. These are actually excellent. But yeah, so yeah, that's my unfortunate new machine. And again, I, this is, you know, vacuum safety usually doesn't show new machines, but hey, it is different. It's a machine I have got from somewhere. And generally, I always recommend buying refurbished other than new. And despite this blunder, I still stand by that because it's much less wasteful than buying a new machine and you save money in the process. But this is definitely not the best advertisement for that. But remember, this was originally $600. Don't know why it was that much, but it was. And I got this for less than 200 So, well, technically it was 209 but I had a coupon but yeah, so that's that. Too bad it didn't work out because I would have been very happy with this and that I would have made this my daily driver and everything. Which I have plenty of other Dysons. Even if I have to send this back, I suppose it's not a big deal. 
but yeah, finally, speaking of Dyson, we've got this adorable little fella. So, we're going to cover this now. Now, I saved the best for last. This adorbulous little munchkin is the Dyson City DC26 Multifloor. Got this on eBay for, I believe, about 90 bucks, I want to say. And then shipping was actually very reasonable for eBay. So, I think after all said and done, it was like 125 129 somewhere in that range. The only thing it was missing was the upholstery tool. It had the combo tool with it, so I supplied my own upholstery tool. I believe the ones these come with are supposed to be a bit smaller, but I don't know. So this adorable little machine is Dyson's attempt at a small machine. And I have always wanted one because look at this. It's so cute. This is actually my first Dyson canister. Although I do have a lead on a DC-21 stowaway. I'm not so confident that's going to work out because that's been in process for several months along with another 14. This machine is very, very cute. Now, of course, it's not appropriate for my house with its turbine brush, but for above floor cleaning, for tools, it's the same tool fitting as all the Dyson uprights since the DC-25. So you can attach the flat-out tool and the articulating hard floor tool and all that stuff and use it on hard floors. And, yeah, it's a very, very, very cute machine. And... Yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm obviously not going to use it to clean the house all the time because it's not really appropriate for it. But for dusting and all sorts of stuff like that, it's it's quite nice. Now I'll extend this wand real quick. I need two hands for that. And we'll give this a run. Now the hose on this is quite short. And this machine does have a habit of toppling over, which is something they attempted to address on some of the newer Dyson canisters. But... This is still a nice little machine. Now, again, this little turbo brush isn't going to do much on my carpet, but the main purpose of this is more so for tool usage, given it has a suction relief trigger, and you don't even have to use the wand. You can connect anything directly onto the end of the hose, which is the way I prefer to do it. So things like the tangle-free turbine, all that stuff from the uprights, which I have all the Dyson attachments, they fit on here, because Dyson has the best attachment ecosystem, if you ask me. So, we're going to give this a little run. I already did a separate video on this, but yeah, pretty interesting. Full review on this will come at some point. I can reach this. Now you got to give this a sec. We're trying to reach that, but yeah, of course, this part is kind of useless, but yeah, still an adorable machine. And for dusting or doing anything like that, it's quite nice. Just look how tiny it is, and for stairs, too. Yeah, for a while, I used my Shark Navigator lift away on stairs, but now I intend on using this instead because, well, I don't have that machine anymore so in the meantime i've been using either a, either the dyson's whatever dyson's i'm using like the uprights or the phantom fury with the hose extension or sometimes the v8 but not super often maybe once in a while but yeah so this has been very very nice it's still hey it's still got some stuff and obviously, I don't expect to get anything after this. So, so anyways, that was episode 51 of Vacuum Saved. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining. Hopefully, I didn't drive anybody away or 
I don't know, because the, these videos haven't been performing as well as they used to, and that makes me really sad, because I love making these videos, even though they do require a lot of effort from me, because lifting this many vacuums down my stairs is not easy. But yeah, this is Inteltech Studio signing out with the first vacuum saved of 2024, and here's to many more. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know your favorite machines from this video, what you found recently, and your thoughts in the comments below. Any engagement is appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you all have a good one. Peace. Reviews on a lot of these machines will be coming soon, and some other content as well. Bye-bye.